Hello, welcome to this week's video. This week I will be creating my ideal 1950s autumnal wardrobe. If you watched my last video where we went fabric and notion shopping in the garment district, you'll know that I mentioned that I wanted to make two skirts, a dress with a matching jacket, a sweater, 1950 sweater, a house dress with long sleeves, and then possibly a pinafore. I'm actually not going to be doing this sweater. Um, upon doing further research, I realized that working with sweater knits is maybe a little bit more difficult than I initially thought. So I want to be able to research that just a tiny bit more before I make a video. I thought that I don't see many 1950s sweater videos or tutorials. I think that would be super useful if it was its own video. So for inspiration on what I wanted to create, I referenced my pattern stash. I referenced my 1954 Sears catalog. I also referenced my 1950s Sears source book and my 1950s pattern source book. There were so many, so many beautiful ideas in the pattern source book. I love this one. I actually went on to Etsy to see if any of these patterns were available for sale and I did find a few. I ordered them. I'm kind of basing um, what I'm exactly doing off of when they do arrive. Even if none of them get here in time, that's totally fine. I've already picked out other options that I had in my own pattern stash. So that's no problem. And then I'm probably going to do a follow-up video to this where I make more autumnal clothing because four or five options, I don't think that's really enough to call it a wardrobe. So these are my final choices based on what I already have in my pattern stash. However, if I do receive the patterns that I got in time, then I might change this decisions. So these are the two different kinds of fabrics that I chose for the two skirts that I will be creating. This is the orange like plaid one and then this is just a wool with little spots of yellow and white. So I've decided that the wool that I initially picked for this skirt is a little too heavy um, for this gathering and especially this yoke piece. So instead I chose this lighter crepe. This is a wool crepe and I think this will work pretty well. It's super light. got some of the patterns that I ordered in the mail. I absolutely love this one in particular. Oh my god, aren't these so pretty? And the fact that it is green, I think just adds another level of like subconscious, I like this, I want this. This is the suit I'm definitely going to try to make. So I got this broom from Trader Joe's and it's like a cinnamon bark broom. Oh my god, it smells so good. Like, I feel like every time I smell it, I like take a hit of crack or something. If you have a Trader Joe's in your area or if you have like, I guess a craft store would be another great place to get one of these or a garden store, go and get this. It is so amazing. <laughs> and it looks like, you know, you're a part-time witch. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so first I'm going to start with the orange plaid skirt. So before we get started, let's choose our thread color. Uh, honestly, white could also be used for this. So I might actually just choose white. On to the other thread draw. This is good. That's perfect. So first I started off by stay stitching the opening of the skirt. I recommend stay stitching anywhere that will be taking any weight, especially if it is a fabric that is like chiffon or organza or boucle which is basically any fabric that has a weave that is not dense. If this was like a wool felt, I wouldn't really be worrying about it. Okay, so right now I am just kind of trying the skirt on, making sure it's going to fit perfectly when I put my zipper in on this side. I really love the swoosh of it. Next, I pinked my seams because I forgot to do a French seam and then I pressed the seams open. So I just basted the left seam off of camera. This is where the zipper will go. Right now I'm going to press it and then insert this metal zipper. Oh my gosh, my iron got too hot. 
it literally burnt a hole through my sleeve board. Damn, dude. That is insane. All right, I just put the zipper in off camera. It's okay. It's a little wonky. Um, I have to iron it into place. I think I went a little too far on this side. So I wanted to make this video because autumn is my favorite season, not only for the tasty and comforting food or the idyllic warm colors or literally everything cozy, but it's the perfect time of year, specifically in the Northern US, where it's not too cold yet, which equals the best time of year to wear 1950s clothing, in my humble opinion. Beautifully tailored suits that would be too hot for summer don't have to be covered up with a coat quite yet. Honestly, to me, modern clothing is so uninspiring right now. The fact that trends change so frequently has really burnt me out emotionally and financially and has prompted me within the last six years to really gravitate towards timeless styles. And of course, being a dress historian doesn't hurt. I love mid-century styles so much because they're objectively really pretty. I've never once heard somebody say, ugh, 1950s style, ew, that's ugly. Obviously other decades can't claim the same adoration, but today's fashion industry is predatory in more ways than one. I'm sure you already know that fast fashion contributes to modern day slavery, that textile runoff literally ruins entire ecosystems, and that a large percentage of fast fashion will end up in a landfill somewhere in Africa. However, they're also predatory in terms of our insecurities. I feel like fast fashion makes us feel frumpy, out of touch, sloppy, or dare I say chuggy, if we aren't consumed the new trend. Yes, other decades definitely had this problem. However, it took 10 years for trends to change, not two months like it does now. Plus, public education back then was still teaching sewing as a life skill, so people were able to adapt their clothing when trends or their tastes did change. People were in charge of their wardrobes. Their wardrobe wasn't in charge of them. If you are making a circle skirt, definitely stay stitch the circumference of the skirt because it will allow for a very easy double fold hem. Just a little word to the wise. All right, we are on to the next skirt. I love how intentional people of the past were with their style choices. I mean, you honestly had to be. Clothing was not cheap. Curating a wardrobe and teaching the next generation how to style clothing for elegance and economy was a valid life skill in itself. Home economics classes taught girls how to match colors, how to wear patterns and textures correctly. I feel like we've reached a time where we wear unquestionably ugly items just for the irony. There's some paws on my fabric. What do you have to say for yourself, ma'am? Are you gonna just stand there? What you looking at? Oh my God, is there a ghost? Hi, Bear Bear. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Smell, smell, smell. Bye, Bear Bear, I love you. See you later. Anyway, so if you know anything about 20th century dress history, then you'll know that after World War II, Dior created a new silhouette called the New Look, which was defined by rounded shoulders, a T-length hem, large skirts, and a nipped waist. Basically like the ultimate hourglass figure. Pants were still becoming popular. Um, however, women mostly wore skirts, especially to school or work. Pants were for informal occasions only, pretty much. Warm weather skirts were characterized by lightweight cottons and rayons, while autumn and winter skirts were characterized by wools and heavy cottons. There was also an embellishment and applique craze among teens during the mid-1950s, where everything from dogs and flowers to highly insensitive motifs were sewn onto skirts. Even my skirt came with some applique patterns of birds. These were known as poodle skirts and were created by American designer Julie Lynn Charlot. Charlot? I'm not sure, but poodle skirts definitely deserve a video of their own. Since the 19th century, the concept of a blouse and a skirt ensemble really never went out of style. During the 1950s, skirts fell between the knee and the mid calf and could be either slim or full. The use of separates, which became popular in the 1940s because they added versatility to a wardrobe, remained popular into the 1950s because basic wardrobe staples could be mixed and matched. Right after hemming the skirt, I pinned my double fold hem into place and then proceeded to sew it. Okay, so I just finished the hem and now I'm going to be moving on to the dress with the matching jacket. 
Okay, so this is the pattern that I would like to use to make the matching skirt jacket. I feel like this is super autumnal. I think I would make this one. Not entirely sure yet though. But as you can see, it says size 14, 32 inch bust. Usually a size 14 should be a 34 inch bust, but this is like a junior miss pattern. So they were just a tad bit smaller. Now, I'm not sure if this will fit me because I feel like these patterns do have a lot of ease in them. I have, I guess you would say a 36 inch bust but size 16 is way too big for me. I fit into size 14 or 12. So I'm going to put this on my dress form and see if it will roughly fit. If not, I'm going to choose another pattern because I just don't have the time to adjust this. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm definitely going to make a mock-up of this before I cut into my $35 yard fabric. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Okay, so I just finished making the mock-up. So I'm definitely going to be raising the waist about two inches because my waist is here. I want it to be fitted. I don't want it to be loose at all. But when you have stuff with buttons, it definitely gives away if something doesn't fit properly. I just picked out the guide colors. I don't have anything that's like super spot on because obviously there's like a little bit of a difference in the coloration of the fabric. However, I do think these are good enough. So I'm going to go spin a bobbin and then thread my machine. Okay, so I have all of my fabrics and interface, that's my interfacing laid out. I'm just unsure on what lining to pick. I do wanna line this jacket. I wanna do it right, cause I wanna be able to wear this regularly. So I have these two silks. This is a gorgeous duchess silk. It's in a color that I wouldn't normally wear. I originally got this for the swim dress and just didn't end up using it. I was thinking of maybe making like a 1950s like nightgown out of it and possibly like a robe, um, but I thought it would be like kind of like a pretty contrasting lining color and it's completely opaque, which I love. And then I have this um, silk crepe de chine. Usually crepe de chines are quite transparent, but this one's actually pretty opaque. Like you can't even see my hand through it. So go with the somewhat matching green lining or the fun Duchess satin lining. Hmm, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this one. So it took me like 20 hours to cut and mark everything out, but I finally got the main fabric all cut out and marked, the lining fabric all cut out and marked, and then the facing cut out as well. So the tailored suit skirt was the epitome of elegance in the 1950s. There were two different kinds of suits. So there was a country suit and then the urban or city suit. So country suits were usually made out of like a heavy wool or tweed. The jacket wasn't always tailored to fit and it was usually paired with a pleated skirt, which made walking and tending to the land easier. However, suit skirts in the city were precisely tailored and made out of brightly colored wools, which were maybe a little bit lighter. They could also be made out of like navy or blacks or grays. Urban suit skirts were a little bit brighter than a country one would be. Suit skirts of the early 1950s featured a nipped or a wasp waist, which disappeared in the late 1950s in favor for Chanel's like boxy or straighter suit skirt. So right now I'm about to sew on the closures. So I wanted to reference my box of silk threads and see if I had anything that matched. Thankfully I had an unusual number of dark mossy greens so that was a fun surprise so i am using hooks and eyes to close this skirt as opposed to a zipper boucle as i've mentioned before it's not very stable so i don't want to chance it with a constant pull of a zipper so for the skirt i did my trusty double fold hem and then took it to the machine to sew it down next i matched the sides of the bodice and sewed those together then I joined the upper collar to the lower collar, pinned those together, and then took them to my machine and then turned it inside out. I feel like I am so intimidated by collars. I feel like they look so difficult. And the first few I did were definitely challenging. But now I don't think there's really anything to fear. They're pretty self-explanatory. 
So I just sewed the facing to the body of the jacket and the collar as well. And I feel like it's looking more and more like a suit as I go on. I could be a little straighter, but this boucle is very um, not dense in its weave. So I don't want to press the corner out too much and then rip all the stitches. So I'm fine with it looking a little bit curved. Okay, so next I am moving on to the sleeves. This pattern doesn't have the sleeve as like one cylinder. It has an undersleeve and an oversleeve. Sleeves are arguably one of the most difficult parts of a garment, especially a fitted garment. So I wanted to make sure I really got these right. So after sewing the sleeves together, I pressed the seams to one side. So next I am attaching the sleeves to the bodice and then sewing those in place. Okay, so so far I am really liking the way it's looking so far. I have this, I'm just kind of seeing where the hem will lie. So this like front pit fits really well, but the sleeves I feel like are kind of big and I've already resized them twice, but they're still like big. So I think I'm just gonna leave them how they are, especially when you have a sweater on, you kind of want the sleeves to be maybe a little bit bigger, but yeah, that's like my only complaint right now. Okay, now it is time for the cuffs. This is definitely something I wanted to get right in terms of the period. So I referenced my 1950 Simplicity sewing book and I used one of their methods, um, the bias method to sew on the cuff properly. So next I am using a double fold hem to conceal the raw edge of the bottom of the jacket. Now it is time to make the fabric covered buttons. I actually, I love making fabric covered buttons. They're just so fun. I feel like not a lot of effort goes into making something that looks really good. So if you've ever hesitated trying to make your own fabric covered buttons, definitely don't. The supplies are super cheap off Etsy and they always come out great. Next, I am marking the placement for my buttonholes. So I found this silk embroidery thread in my thread drawer. I initially thought it was cotton or linen, but I took a closer look and I realized it is indeed silk and it's a rather large spool of it. Spools of silk thread were generally really tiny back in the 1950s and decades prior to that. I don't know, I just felt so lucky. I found a rather large spool of silk thread in the exact same color of my fabric. I love little things like that when they happen. Now that I'm wrapping up completion on the final garment, let's move on to the reveal. I really love this wool crepe. It's not itchy at all and feels really nice against the skin. I honestly thought I would never use this fabric because the color is kind of ugly. I ordered it online, but now it's one of my favorite skirts. It's funny how that happens. Also, please excuse my dog in the background. It's literally her life's mission to try and eat all the sticks that she sees. So for the next skirt, this plaid fabric was actually a linen cotton mix. So it definitely wrinkles easy, but I love how the fabric feels and the orange plaid screams, autumn's here. I feel like this would be a great Thanksgiving skirt. Also, I just wanted to mention, I know that my hair is hopelessly modern. I have extremely frizzy and unruly hair, so no two vintage hairstyles ever look the same on me. I've kind of been experimenting with pink curls and foam rollers. I think I definitely like the pin curls much more. It just takes a lot of time, especially for somebody who has to wash their hair basically every day or every other day. And even if I didn't, the curls wouldn't last more than one day with my hair type anyway. Next is the suit, which was really fun to make. I feel like projects like this can be somewhat intimidating, especially when the item is fitted. But overall, I really like how this ended up. I wish the waist was more defined like on the envelope. I think if I used horse hair interfacing instead of fusible interfacing, I would have gotten a better result. The reason why I went for fusible is because it stabilized the boucle better than a sew-on interfacing would. I also did not have time to sew the lining into the jacket, so I will be doing that after I edit this video. So if you enjoyed my autumnal 1950s constructions, please give this video a like and subscribe. 